You begin life as a cyst. You are so small that a speck of dust dwarfs you. You float, invisible, inside a shell of slime. You are not born in safety, not in comfort, not in protection. You are dumped into a puddle, a pond, a swamp, maybe even the hot spring or the shallow edge of a swimming pool that was never cleaned. Your entire world is a thin wall of slime between you and total annihilation. From the first second, you are prey. The sun can fry you with ultraviolet light in seconds. A single splash of chlorine can dissolve you like sugar. The water itself is unstable, a drop in temperature, a change in pH, and you collapse into death. Even smaller killers circle you. Viruses can slip through your shell, hijack your cell, and burst you from the inside out. Larger microbes can probe and tear you apart. You are not protected. You are waiting to die. Most Neglaria never hatch. Billions will never see life outside this cyst. They rot in the mud, erased before anyone knows they existed. But you, unlucky, cursed, persistent, split free. You hatch into a trophozoite. This is your feeding form. This is your chance to live. You sprout flagella, whip-like tails that lash the water and propel you in short bursts. You are still microscopic, still fragile, but now you are moving. You are alive in the most desperate sense. And you are starving, always starving. Your body is built for nothing but hunger, but you have no mouth, no stomach, no intestines. You eat by engulfing. You stretch your entire body around your prey, wrap it, dissolve it, suck it inside. Your prey is bacteria, tiny scraps of life scattered in the water. You are condemned to graze constantly, endlessly. If you stop, you die. If you cannot find enough, you vanish. Imagine being human and living this way. Imagine having to eat single crumbs, one by one, every second of every day, never full, never satisfied, never allowed to stop. That is your life. You are a slave to your hunger. But even as you feed, you are hunted. Other amoebas engulf you the way you engulf bacteria. Microscopic worms pierce you like harpoons. Viruses infect you, rip you apart, and leave only scraps. A change in sunlight, a drop in oxygen, and you burn out. Your world is a puddle, but it is also a war zone. Most of your kind die here. Trillions erased, invisible casualties of a microscopic battlefield. You scrape, you feed, you divide. One becomes two, two become four, four become billions. A cloud of invisible mouths drifting unseen in warm water. And almost all of you will die without leaving a mark. But a tiny handful, the unlucky handful, stumble into something far worse. One day, you are sucked up a nose. A human dives into a lake. They splash, they laugh, they inhale a rush of warm water through their nostrils, and you are carried inside. For you, this is destiny. For them, it is doom. You cling to the moist lining of the nasal cavity. You crawl forward. You are microscopic, but you are relentless. You squeeze through mucus. You wriggle cell by cell along the olfactory nerve. You follow chemical trails that lead upward. You are climbing, invisible, toward the organ that defines a person. And then, you reach the brain. To you, it is paradise. The brain is built of neurons, soft, fatty, chemical-rich cells. To a human, they are memory, identity, thought, self. But to you, they smell like bacteria, they taste like bacteria, and so you eat them as if they are bacteria. You release enzymes, you dissolve tissue, you engulf neurons, you devour thoughts as if they were crumbs. You multiply as you feed. You are not trying to kill. You are not evil. You are only doing what you were built to do, eat. But your eating destroys everything. The human begins to feel it as a headache. At first, they dismiss it. Then fever, nausea, vomiting. By day three, the pain becomes unbearable. The neck stiffens, the eyes burn. By day four, seizures erupt, hallucinations begin. The brain swells with inflammation. Within a week, the body collapses. Doctors call it primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. The survival rate is less than 
Out of hundreds of cases in recorded history, fewer than 10 survivors have ever been documented. Almost everyone dies. It is one of the deadliest infections known to science. And yet, you never meant for this. You were designed to eat bacteria, but neurons look and taste the same. You cannot tell the difference. You cannot stop yourself. Imagine being trapped in a room where every wall, every floorboard, every chair is made of food. You would gorge until you destroyed yourself. That is what you do in the brain. But your victory is your death sentence. The host dies, and when they die, you die with them. The fever cooks you, the immune system burns through you, the body shuts down, oxygen vanishes, and you starve inside the corpse you consumed. You do not spread, you do not conquer. You do not thrive. You perish with your victim. Your entire existence is misery. As a cyst, you are prey before you hatch. As a trophozoid, you are a starving drifter scraping crumbs to survive. As an invader, you eat a brain, but you destroy yourself in the process. Every stage is hopeless. You are remembered, but not as a survivor, not as a miracle of evolution not as a part of the food chain, you are remembered only as a monster. The brain-eating amoeba, the microscopic nightmare, the thing that kills swimmers in summer. And yet, you do not benefit from the fear. You gain nothing from the headlines. You do not spread faster because of the terror. You die the same way, starved, hunted, erased. So why does it suck to be born as Nigeria Foley? Because you are invisible, but hunted, because you are starving, but never full, because your only glory is to be hated, because even your success ends in your death. You are not a legend. You are not a monster. You are worse. An accident. An evolutionary mistake, a parasite doomed to destroy itself every time it succeeds. You are Neglaria Foley, born in slime, living on scraps, doomed by hunger, hated forever.